let him take it away. All right, so we're going to do an introduction to Ember.js. Um, I pulled this straight from the website, so it's a framework for creating ambitious web applications. Um, so he already went over. I'm John Christopher. I work at Polymerware. Um, this is all available at uh, this GitHub page. So that's why these links are in there for the slides, code, and a demo. Um, and uh, I'll tweet that out afterwards, and we'll put it on the Nebraska.js site afterwards. So we'll talk about what is uh, Ember.js and where did it come from. Just a, a real quick background. So um, MobileMe came out several years ago. I can't remember when. And at the same time, they introduced this JavaScript framework called Sprout Core. Uh, Sprout Core was mainly, its game was like a native widget library for uh, JavaScript. So if you went to MobileMe, you could see a calendar that looked like the Mac calendar. And uh, uh, Yahoo to Cats got involved, and uh, they started writing Sprout Core 2. And it was going to morph into more of a web application framework than a native library framework, uh, net native widget library framework. And uh, so that's where that started. Uh, he then changed the name to Amber because essentially people who were on Sprout Core 1 looked at Sprout Core 2 and kind of said, what's going on? This is not the same thing. And then Amber became Ember.js, which it is today. It's been like a two-year process. I think that he did that like in 2011, something like that. And like I said, according to the Ember.js website, uh, it's a framework for creating ambitious web apps. Um, <coughs> Some of the goals of Ember, and again, I pulled this from the website as well, and I'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, write dramatically less code. Um, their idea behind that is, uh, so they use a handlebars template. It's, uh, it's like mustache, but Yehuda added some stuff on top of it for da data binding, which he really liked from the Sprout Core stuff, because you could data bind your model data to your uh, widget library. Um, so using the handlebars with the built-in um, data binding, you end up writing a lot less code because there's automatic um, the, the binding allows you to do automatic things, and we'll get into that when we get to the demo and the code. Um, don't waste time on trivial decisions. Um, that's a nice way of saying do it my way or you're probably going to have a bad time. Um, <laughs> so uh, I guess I can go in a little bit about that. Uh, so these uh, Yehuda cats, probably everybody knows him from the Rails. Um, good Lord, I can't remember the name of the framework that he had before that. Merb. <laughs> the Mer, uh, Rails uh, merge. So this, this was written by Rails people. It's definitely for Rails people, but it's not only for Rails people. I'm not a Rails person. I'm a, I love JavaScript. That's what I want to do. So I, I enjoyed working with Ember.js as a JavaScript person. Um, so, but if you, if you have an understanding of Rails, I would use Ember.js because it's going to translate and you'll, it'll make it a lot easier. Um, develop faster with its friendly APIs. So they have put a lot of work into making sure that the API is going to be the right, or the right API for version one. Um, we'll get in a little bit about that as we go on. Um, and we'll get into it right now. So recent popularity. So you ever have that feeling like, uh, was this really popular before and I just wasn't paying attention? Or do it, is it seem popular now because now I'm looking at it? So two months ago, I was like, I'll do a talk on Ember.js. Never even looked at Ember.js. I don't know why. I just hadn't done a talk in a while. I was interested in learning it. And of course, I got the feeling like, is Ember cool because I'm only looking at it now or is something going on? I honestly think it's something's going on because PeepCode put out a screencast here recently. Since, since I said I would do the talk, like three books have been announced and you can actually get access to them and I'll give links to those. And then uh, the, big th the other big thing was uh, that discourse.org, if anybody knows what that is, Jeff Atwood from uh, um, Stack Overflow Flow fame, they, they're redoing bulletin boards, or not bulletin boards, uh, yeah, bulletin boards, boards. message boards. Um, and they used Ember, and it, they were really vocal about it. They've put out tutorials, or here's why we did it with Ember. So, that's, uh, so it, I think it is gaining popularity right now, but the, the big reason why I think it's gaining popularity right now is because um, like I said, they've, they've been working at this for two years, and over those two years, they have not been um, shy about changing the API. And they haven't been shy about telling you. You know, you go to their website, here's our API, and they would have a big warning, this is going to change, so just be ready. Um, 
they're on, I think my code's against version one RC3. So they're about to release their 1.0 release and they've been very vocal about that. When they release their 1.0 release, things are gonna be frozen. It's going, this, is, this is the API we wanna expose. This is what we wanna build on. So now, now you can move forward. It's kind of the, you know, the, the gist I've gotten from the community at least. Um, granted, I've only been in the community for, you know, not in the community, but paying attention to the community for a couple months. So, but they're getting really close with the 1.0 release. So let's talk about some of the parts of Ember. Um, I'll, I'll roll over the, the main parts and then we'll come back and, then, and we'll definitely hit all this in the code. So they have a router, um, a controller, a model, a view, a template, and then there's this other thing called Ember data and it kind of builds into the, it definitely hooks into the model and we'll get to that. Um, Ember is definitely an MVC framework. So that can mean a lot of things from a web application standpoint because you know, back in the days of like struts, struts said it was MVC, but th that wasn't MVC. Um, there's a lot of web frameworks that say they're MVC. They're not MVC. They're like multiple. There's like this MV star definition out there now. You can go look. There's a bunch of different ones. Ember, Ember is definitely more geared towards the, the true MVC of Smalltalk where um, you have your model data. That's your domain model. That's your data that you're going to store, save, that you need uh, to retrieve. You, got, you have your view. That's where you're going, to, you're going to manage what the user does, the clicks, how it's displayed. And then you have this controller piece that is essentially sits in front of the model and also deals with user actions. So um, let's talk about them in uh, Ember's view. So the router, which is a little bit outside of that, so anybody who's done uh, Rails will think, okay, I know what a router is. It's, it's very similar, especially when you look at the code, but when you think of it from a single page web application, the router is really gonna act like a state tracking piece. It's gonna track the state of your app and it's gonna match URLs to controllers. We'll, you'll see that as we kind of get into the app, um, into the demo. The controller for action handling and it's also a proxy for your object models. So <clears throat> you, you, know, you have some domain, model, domain data that's gonna come up from your model, that's normal. There's always some other data that generally has to be, this, that's gonna be displayed on your view. You would put those properties into your controller and they're gonna, so now your controller is sitting there with those pro properties and it's also gonna proxy to your model object. So that's how your view is gonna get its data. Model is going to be access to your application data, retrieval, storage, that type of stuff. Um, all the views are, ha the view handles user input, or excuse me, user input, and then, like I said, it uses handlebar templates, so that's going to do all the layout of HTML. Ember data is um, where you're going to hook up to your server-side data or your local storage, or in our case, in my demo, we just use fixtures. <coughs> Um, that's where you're going to find adapters to essentially adapt. Here's what my server is giving. Here's what my model looks like. I need to adapt to that. Um, and transforms. So in the, I, I have not used Ember data. In its current state, it looks like the REST adapter is going to be your best bet. And it's heavily geared towards uh, Rails active uh, record serialization. serialization. So if you, if you have a Rails app, you probably have a good chance of just plugging in the REST adapter and, 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 and moving forward. <clears throat> so looking at some of the code, this is what uh, an index route would look like, or excuse me, a router is gonna look like. Um, in this case, this one's simply uh, implementing a redirect function and it's gonna transition to a different route. And, and a lot of this stuff, don't worry, I'm gonna go into it in the code so you can see how it's actually working. Um, that's probably, hard to see, but this is a controller. In this case, it's an array controller because I'm sitting on top of a collection. Um, this content colon array is just the content that's gonna be displayed in that controller. Um, behind the scenes, the route is actually hooked to a model, so we'll get into that. So that's gonna actually fill that content array. Um, and we'll get into some of the other stuff there as well, but this is where some of the action stuff I was talking about. Um, in this case, I'm gonna add a book to a shelf is gonna be, and like I said, we'll get, to more, get in more depth when we actually start looking at the code. This is a, this is a, a pretty simple example of a model. Um, this is my shelf model. I extend model and I have two attributes. I have a books um, 
excuse me, a books association. So I have many, this shelf's gonna have many books. And then this, this, uh, this shelf has a category, which is a string. This is a, so this is a view class that will sit behind your uh, template and this can, or can, can essentially direct how the um, route and controller hook up to the template. In this case, I have a shelf, shelf view and right here the key thing is I'm saying, hey, my layout is the shelf list layout template and then the, the actual template for this, uh, this controller is the shelf template. Oh, and that, that link's broke. We'll get to code, sorry. Supposed to be an image there. And then this is some, this is essentially, the, this is the basics of setting up uh, Ember data. In this case, I'm setting up a store. Um, the revision, the same goes with the Ember data. They haven't released their final, this is version one. So they've been doing revision tracking. And if I, you know, with this, I'm saying I'm at the latest revision, which is 11, and that's what, they're, what, the, uh, what the object I get is gonna support. I, if, if I wanted to, I could say I'm on revision 10, and in my, if I was on older code, it would still work. And then, in this case, my adapter is going to be a fixture adapter. If I were talking to a Rails backend, I'd probably make this a REST adapter or something like that. You can also write your own custom adapters <coughs> to work with your backend. So, getting started with Ember. So this is, I, 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 I it kind of went back and forth on how I should go with this, and I wanted the easiest way to get started. Um, so I'm going to list a couple of ways that I looked at. So it only has a couple of dependencies. It has jQuery and handlebars. And um, what I used to get started was this Ember.js starter kit. Um, if you look at it, it's just a GitHub repo. And you can clone this or fork it and you essentially get some, you get a CSS file that's empty. It says put your CSS there. You get a JS lib or you get a JS dir with your uh, app where your Ember code should go and it's already got a little bit of uh, stuff in there to get you started. And then you have um, Ember, handlebars, and jQuery. One of the other ones that I was looking at that's somewhat new, it got announced while I was doing my, some research on it, is this Ember Tools. Um, this one is, I didn't go with this one because this one introduces a lot more technologies than I wanted to, to have everybody look at when we're trying to look at, uh, look at Ember. If you go to their GitHub site, they have this uh, animated GIF that essentially shows you how to run through it. And I'm going to run through it real quick just to show you kind of what it does. Um, I'm, I've already done the NPM install Ember tools part. So if I, if I look at my, uh, my cheat sheet here, I'm going to uh, copy the first thing I need to do just so that way I don't. So project books. So, so Ember Tools provides this Ember command. I'm going to tell it to create, which is essentially creating an Ember app. And I'm inside of this books app, essentially inside of books, which would be my application because I would still have server side code that I would need to worry about. I'm going to create my front end Ember books app. So I create that. It does some very Rails S stuff. Um, and then I'm gonna run this command, which here, if we look at it in the, uh, so Ember generate, I wanna generate some scaffolding. Uh, I'm gonna create a book object. It's gonna have a property, uh, a property of a title of string, an author of string, and a published, probably should be published date, but a number. So if I run this, it's gonna create some other files, and we'll look at the files in just a sec. So at this point, I actually need to build this because after we look at the code, you'll see why. So in this case, it built, built me a template.js and index.js. So at this point, I can open emberbook index.html. And here's an here's a ember app that's got some scaffolding in it. Now, I created a, a, book, a book object with scaffolding. So what I actually need to do is I need to get, navigate to the books controller. So now I'm at the books controller, and you can see it, it's... I mean, who, who was here when Rails came out? This was like the, the, re, the videos that were there, right? This was where everybody was like, oh my God, this is awesome. I mean, it's still pretty cool. You know, I can go in here. I did, I did three commands. I have the scaffolding. Um, uh, some, not some author. How about? 
That, yeah, so I'm sorry, I skipped over that because I said, so it's an actually a Node project, so if you, ha you have to have Node and then just npm install dash g to make sure it's global, uh, ember dash tools, and it'll give you your ember command. Um, I kind of glossed over that part because I already had it done. Um, and then, you know, you, it's, this is the gist of it. You get it in there, you're, you're already saving stuff. Um, you can go back to all books, it's going to list them, view, you can edit it and I can destroy it. So that's kind of cool to get started with Ember book, or the Ember tools stuff. The reason why I didn't want to um, get started with that is because if I open up Ember, um, Ember books, it does, a, so when, you, when we get to my, the demo of the app I bought, or I bought, I created, yeah, I bought it on the internet. Um, <laughs> the app that I created, um, all my code is, is, is in, it's in an app.js file and it's in an index file. I have my templates in the index, index file or in the index.html file, which is not the way you want to go. But I didn't want to get into how are you going to break those into different, different files. In this case, Ember, this one uses um, common, the common JS module theme and then that's why you got to run, run Ember build because essentially it's going to put all the stuff into two files. You know, so, so here's my controllers, a book controller for listing out the books. Um, um, and the edit controller and the new book controller. I have my models, which is just my book model. Um, and then some routes. So I have my books route. And then it's got my templates here. So if we look at books <coughs> template, I can see there's going to be a for each in there to list, to link over the books that are in the controller. I mean, I didn't really want to go down this route because there's a lot more technologies in here than what I wanted to show for, for Ember. But Ember Tools looks like it's pretty cool, and they're going to add support for other things like AMD modules and that type of stuff down the road. So, so now let's let's dig into the code that um, that I did. So this is this is going to be pretty basic at first. I mean, it's pretty basic throughout, but the goal here is to just get you introduced to uh, some of the different Ember uh, pieces. So in this case, we're going to do step one, which is, I mean, it's a Hello Ember, and I think there's a little bit more in here because if we go to uh, um, shelves. Then it's going to list out some of my shelves. So we'll, if we look at the code here, <clears throat> so let's start with my ember.app. Can everybody see that okay? All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my ember application. So I have app equals ember application.create. Uh, that's all we got to do to get started. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build my router. This is if you've come for Rails, this is very Rails-esque. I have this.route shelves. Uh, I put in the path of what the URL is going to look like, and then that's the only route I have in there at this point. So, at this, so something to understand is that, so at this point I said, hey, this.route shelves. So when I do that, Ember, um, Ember will create objects for you. That's one of the cool things that, 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 that really amazed me about Ember. And if you get a chance, if you, if you, you spend some money to go look at the peep code, uh, peep code screencast, they do a really good job of building it up. And then they just go, at the end, they go, okay, and here's all the code we delete. Because they go through and they write, they explicitly write out all the code that needs to be there. And then they go back and delete the, delete the code that's just automatically created by Ember. Because this is, like I said, very Rails-esque. There's, there's idioms you follow. And so if the fact that I said this.route shelves, it's already going to create an app.shelves route for me. So if I did not want to set a model on this, I would not have to have that shelves route. It would automatically be there. We could go in the, um, in the debug and it would say, hey, I, here's a generated shelves route. The only reason why I overrode it is because I want to set the model property. And the model property is just telling this route, what, what is your resource that you're trying to route to? That's, that's essentially what it is. So my shelves route is actually is, is a resource on top of all of my uh, book sh my shelves. In this case, it's a shelves with different books on it. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna return app.shelf.find. Now, app.shelf.find is just calling the find method on my shelf model. So I set up my store, which is a fixture adapter. I'm setting up my, uh, my shelf model, which is uh, just calling ds.model.extend, has many books, has a category. 
Um, and we'll talk more about book and shelf as we go to the next steps. So then, so in this case, yes. It is, it's Ember data. It's the Ember data, JS. When we look at, I'll show you the includes when I look at the index.html. The one other thing I need to do is, um, so here, app.shelf.fixtures, this is where I'm setting up the actual data that I'm gonna um, test my app with. So I have, um, I give it an ID, I say what books are associated with that, with it, in this case, the books are with ID one and two, and then what's the category of this, this uh, shelf? In this case, it's uh, JavaScript. And then I have another one, and that one's science fiction. So if we look at the, the index.html, this file, and there's, a, there's too much. Uh, right here is that Ember data, include that, that, uh, that I was talking about. So in this case, I have three handlebar templates. I have this, this first handlebar template here that does not have a data template name. That's gonna be the application template. That's gonna be, if I just had create app, and if, if I just had app.create in there and I brought up the page, then this is the template that would be shown. So I set up some, uh, some layout stuff, like the, the books navigation bar at the top that uses uh, um, Twitter bootstrap that nobody's ever overused at all in any of their talks. And, uh, and then the, the key thing here is, is I set up some other layout stuff and then I have this outlet. I gotta stop pointing into the, 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 yar, the font yonder there and, and actually just highlight it here. It has this outlet. So <clears throat> Rails has something similar called yield. And the, the weird thing about this is Ember has, and I could be totally talking wrong here because I'm not a big Rails developer, but I know Rails has yield. Um, Ember has, Yield and outlet. Outlet is where I'm going to stick the uh, controller that is um, that you, that's that's in in your that's one of your children, excuse me, and it display its template with its controller as its context. Now you can use Yield and Ember as well, but Yield is more for parcels, and we'll our, our excuse me, Yield is more for layouts, and I'll show you that in a, in in the last uh, demo that I do. So in this case, this template gets, gets uh, displayed. When I go to index, so in the, in, the, in the app, when I just go to index, which is that, then the Hello Ember template gets, gets, gets displayed. When I go to the shelves route, then it hits that route and it's gonna display this template for shelves. Now, and in there, it sets up, a, um, it just loops over the shelf objects that are, in the, that are on the controller. So here it's doing each shelf and controller and then it just spits out the category. So if you look, and maybe, maybe there was too much magic in here, maybe I should have uh, done it um, explicit like Peepco did, but I, I don't have any view in here called shelves. I don't, so, so what's, how's that happening? Well, like I said, behind the scenes, Ember is creating that app.shelves view for me. It's setting the template to shelves because that's the name of my route because that makes the most sense. And then that is saying, okay, well, that's what's gonna go into the outlet. And you, the context of that template that, that binds the data, well, that's gonna be the shelves controller. Well, I don't have a shelves controller. It created one for me. And because the model, the, which is, I define the model on this route, which is the resource, is saying, well, that's what needs to go into the contents array. So now on to step two, I, I add a little bit more and let's look at the, what, what happens in the browser this time. We did nothing different here, but what we did do is I added a shelf and then I can go to an ID, okay. There. Yeah. Oh, that's got to be there, though. And, yeah, you're right. I don't have it. Jeez. No matter how many times you go through it before you come to it. 
So let's go over the code and then it'll come to me what I'm doing wrong. So in this case, I added a new route. In this case, this route is called shelf. The path is shelf and a shelf ID. And that's the only thing I did different. Um, the model is the same and the routes are the same. In the template, the only thing that I did different was is I added a new template. In this case, the template's name is shelf. And this time I'm going to loop through the books of e that's uh, the books that are associated with that shelf. So now we're on shelf um, ID1. In that case, it was the JavaScript shelf, and it contains two books, EmberJS in Action and Mastering Space and Time with JavaScript Book 4 uh, on Ember. So <clears throat> the key thing here was is now I added this new route shelf, like I said, set the path. I have this data binding ID here that's going to say, hey, whatever you pass in here, that's going to be the shelf ID. I know that based on the name of that, that I'm going, going to want to go to the shelf controller. And I'm going to want to find the shelf with that ID. So in this case, it knows that it, it found the shelf with ID1, which is category JavaScript. And then put that model object, proxy that model object with the controller, and then I can loop over like I said, the books in there because that shelf has a, uh, a, books, uh, a books association. So let me go to, is there, are there any questions about that? Let me go to the next. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Is there support for putting templates in your own file? There is. There is support for putting templates in your own file. Um, I'll talk about that just a little bit now. There's multi so the way that, that, that they're probably going to want you to do that is they're going to assume you're using Rails, and then you'll just use um, sprockets and the asset pipeline to, to have, the, 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 have them in their own file. You'll compile them, and then they'll get sent to the front end. Um, I, I, I specifically didn't do that in this, this, this talk because I didn't want to get in too depth in the different technologies you have to use. Um, if you're using a node app, there's a connects asset that, that kind of mimics the pipeline and it had, uses something called snockets, but yeah. <clears throat> and I, I'm sure you can do this with uh, AMD, asynchronous modules, but I didn't, I didn't really get into that. Um, so if we look at uh, step three, so in this case, if we look at the template, the only thing I did differently in step three is I added book. You can kind of see where I'm going here. Uh, in this case, if you go to the book template, you'll see the title of the book. I'm using this bind attribute. In this case, I want to build an image, and the source attribute of that image tag needs to be a URL. That's a property, a property that's built on the model. Um, in that case, you can't, they don't want you to do something where you're trying to output a, uh, a handlebars uh, binding in the middle of a HTML um, tag, right? Because what's going to happen is the HTML is going to go, it's going to go through the DOM and that binding is not going to be there yet. So if you use this binding attribute, what it'll do is it'll, at, behind the scenes, it'll go back and it'll set the source attribute to the, to the proper value that what, to whatever the image URL is on the model. And then I'm just showing the author. And if we look at the app, the app, the only thing I changed is I added a new route. So in this case, if I go to book with the book ID, it's going to show me the data for that book. Some other things that I added for this, so it could be argued that this doesn't belong in the model, but that's where I put it so that way we can see what a computed property looks like. <clears throat> so in this case, um, not particularly in this case, but as we go further, I'm going to want to be able to show a thumbnail of the, UR, of, of the image and I also want to be able to show the actual image. In this, so what I did just to show computed properties on a model is, is I put a thumb property. Uh, it's bound to a function. And in this case, I just return, I'm building the URL to the image. So in the thumbnail property, I'm saying, hey, get the image name. So if we look in my model down here, they're all like Ember JS action. That's all it has. So um, get the image name from the model and then append dash thumb dot ping. And I then pass this dot property image. So what that's doing is, 
is it's setting the context of data that this function is going, can work on. So I don't, so inside of this function, I don't actually have access to the entire model. I'm only going to have access to whatever I pass in as a property. So if I forgot to do this, or if I incorrectly type this, I would sit there and go, why isn't this working? And believe me, I did that for probably 10 minutes until I realized, oh, it's not IMG, it's IMAGE, even though it was like, you know, 10 lines below me. So I'm not, I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, it kind of surprised me, but essentially that's, you're gonna, that's the context. The, the data that you, the attributes you essentially list here are what you're gonna have, have, uh, have um, access to within this, this binding. So in this case, there's a thumb URL, there's the image URL. As we've seen that template, I was doing image URL on this one. And if we go to the uh, step three, and if I just go to book one, then bam, there it is. So Ember.js, there's the image, and um, there's the author. <clears throat> so that's kind of, Computed properties are really cool because obviously there's times when you, you know, it's not part of your model, it's something you need to, uh, to bind, you know, first name, last name, who's done full name where you say, oh, I want their first name, last name. That's a good example of a computed property. Uh, the reason why I said I question if those should be in here, well, those could probably be um, uh, view helpers or something because they're totally view based, right? They're not, they have nothing to do with the model when, the more I think about it. Um, so let's get, me into step four. So get, check out step four. <clears throat> so if we look at the code, the only thing that has changed, I don't think anything in the model changed. Uh, added another book. No, maybe not. So I don't think anything in the app actually changed this time. So what I'm actually doing now is, is uh, this is all um, stuff that's, ha that's changed in the, um, excuse me, in the templates. So in this case now, if I go to step four, <clears throat> so one thing that happened, I did not go to hello Ember. I immediately went to shelves. So that was kind of what we talked about in the beginning. So in that case, I overwrote or essentially explicitly told app.index route redirect to this route. And in this case, I said transition to shelves. So that's what it immediately did. The other thing that happened is, is I also now have links to the different books. So now if I, I can go to the JavaScript shelves, I can click through to the books, and there's this nice little uh, cookie trail, whatever you want to call it. Um, so let's look at how we did some of that. This is all based in the templates. So much like Rails, it has these link, the link to helpers, it has template helpers. So in this case, I'm, I'm simply saying, hey, I want to link to the shelf route. The shelf is what I want to link to because in this case, that's gonna, it's going to give me the ID of the current uh, object that's being looped over. And I just wrap the category name in that link to helper. Um, up here, I'm doing the same thing essentially for the, uh, the cookie trail. Um, in this case, I'm at shelves and then I can link back to shelves, and in, in this, this is the category I'm currently at. And then in this case, in category, what I want to do is I want to link, uh, link to the book that I'm, I've, I've looped over. So these are just link to helpers. <clears throat> so that's the gist of that, uh, the, of that demo. But that's really, that really hasn't um, displayed anything that you couldn't do with Rails. I mean, why would you build an app like that, especially if it's just going to link to different, um, different pages? So that's what the next demo about is about. And this one really, really shows you why you would probably want to use Ember instead of, or what something you'd want to use Ember for. Oh, wow, that's tiny compared to how it was on my huge monitor, but it'll be okay. So in this case, um, this is the same app except for everything's all on the same page. I'm not gonna route to something else. I'm gonna click on something that's gonna show up. If I had a huge monitor, it'd be over here like I normally do, right? Because I'm an awesome web developer, I checked everything out. Um, it's responsive though, look, 
it'll get smaller. I use Twitter Bootstrap. Um, <clears throat> so if you get the gist here, I would have shelves, I would have something sitting over here saying, hey, you click this category, you click that category, bam, here comes up all the books for my shelves. Didn't transition to a, the URL transition, but my page didn't transition. It's all in the same single page app. I click on a book, the book comes up, um, there's, a, there's a picture of it, there's the thumb, thumb, the thumb URL that I was talking about, and then, <clears throat> then there's these check marks. And if you look, I think some of these books say I haven't read them and I like them, which makes no sense, right? Yeah, I haven't read that, but I like it. Um, and that's just because of what the fixture said, right? So the reason why those, those lame check boxes are there is because it's, let me switch to the right code. So now if we look at our, our code, so I'm just using some, uh, th some Ember check boxes. So in this case, red is a view Ember dot check box, checked binding, what, proper, what property on the model do I bind to? So just bind it to red, bind it to liked, and then when we look at the, uh, the fixture over here, it's just going to show what's there. But it's also going to keep track in memory of, of if I change something. So it's like, oh, there's a science fiction book over here. And go over there and look at that. Now, if I go back to the book I just checked, which was this one, it's going gonna, it's gonna to maintain because I'm using the model and I'm using the store. And if I were hooked up to a server, it would have said, hey, server, he, he changed these values. Um, so let's look at the differences here. The, the templates, I want to look at the template real quick because not much has changed in the template. There's a few things. So the layout of it's changed a little bit and I regret that. I, I should have kept them the same because then you would see. But in this case, for my application template, I just have an outlet. So, and then when, for my shelves template, it almost looks the same. The one thing that's different, is it this one? So for my shelves template, the, little, the one thing that are different is this, now my, my, these templates have outlets. So if we look what I go to when I get here, so I go, so actually I read, I get, I'm gonna redirect to, to uh, it's gonna redirect me to shelves automatically. I list out the shelves and I have the select category showing here, which is supposed to be over there on the right, right? Well. Here's what happened. So um, I got redirected from index to, to, to the shelves. My, I went through the shelves controller, bound, you know, bound it to my model, showed the shelves view, which had my template, and then I looped over my categories and displayed those. And then at the same time, it said, I need to show shelves index because that's where I'm at. I'm at the index of shelves. I'm not at a new. So it just puts those in there one after the other? Yep. So, so so now, because I'm at index, I'm not anything, my index template, my shell slash index template, is what's going to be displayed in that outlet, this outlet right here. So <clears throat> that's what's in my outlet. Now, when I navigate to an actual shelf, can't even click. When I navigate to an actual shelf, here's what happens. One, <clears throat> My, my, shelves is, my shelves are still there. My shelf template gets, gets, uh, um, gets rendered in, this, in the shelves outlet. So now instead of the shelves index, my shelf, outlet, my shelf template and controller are going into that outlet. And I'm using some, uh, I'm just showing you how to use partial. So if you look at, so I'm using this partial shelf list of, shelf list of books. If we just search for that, it's going to be right down here. I have this, this template called underscore shelf list of books. All it, all it is is, hey, here's the code that's supposed to be in that partial. That's just trying to show you how, how you can use partials in this as well. So in this case, I do the same thing. I loop over my books, right? I'm linking to them. I'm binding to the thumb URLs. Um, I show none if there's otherwise. So then if I click on a book, and what happens is, is in the, in the uh, outlet there, for that one, there's a select a book. It's trying to just lead you to what you're doing, right? So then if I select a book, it's the same story here. My book gets, in this case, my book, template, and controller 
bind to that, that template, it gets displayed in that outlet. So now I have all three of those outlets filled with the different pieces of, of this application. And this is definitely where um, Ember is geared towards. This is where you get into the state, the router being the state. Because my books router is, being the, is the router for my state because in that little books box, I could have a bunch of stuff. I could have add a new book. It opens a form. That, would, that form could go inside of there. That form could be book slash post. And that would be my post template, right? And, it, and I have an outlet there and it would just open up. Could be in a dialogue. Doesn't matter how you do it. And then you post it. It's going to go back to your, your controller and then post your data to your model and nothing else has changed on the page. This is what I thought was really cool. Now, <clears throat> yeah, I said I was going to do this talk two months ago, but I put this together in like three or four days because, you know, we have grandiose things. I'm going to do this two months. I got all the, all the time in the world. Now, I read up on Ember over those few months here and there and stuff, but I was really surprised at how fast I could kind of look at the, the API and look at what was there, look at the peep code screencast, looked at what was available, and just kind of get going with this. Now, if we look at uh, the key thing we need to look at in, uh, in our actual JavaScript code is here's what's changed. Here's what allows me to be able to nest those, nest those resources. So in this case, I've changed my router. Now I'm actually using resource-based router because that's what I'm trying to do here, right? I have shelves, a shelf, and a book. And that's, those are resources. So in this case, I say, hey, this.resources, shelves. I don't have to give my path because my path is shelves. I didn't show that in the last demo, but the fact that before I had there, I had, hey, what's the path? It's shelves. Well, I already said it was shelves. Why? So if you, the default is going to be whatever you say the resource or the, or the route is. Then I um, immediately pass it a function saying, hey, by the way, shelves, you have this other resource, this nested resource called shelf. This one I have to give it a path because this one's going to be shelf and then shelf ID. And then within that one, I pass another function. You know, I, somebody wanted, I should have had the button, the inception button, dun, dun, you know, because essentially what's going on here, right? It's inception. We're going down another layer and down another layer. I could, we could probably have a big tree here of me going down layers upon layers. But it, it's not hard to visualize because template, outlet, that's what's going to go in there. So here's my book resource, and I have to give it a little bit different path. As far as actually setting up um, controllers. So, <clears throat> so this is all the same. Now I actually have an app.shelves controller in here. There's a, and here's the reason why. I added these two methods. So I have to say, hey, there's this content array that's going to get filled with the model data from above here. This needs shelf. So if you watch the peep code and if you look at any old, other old, um, older, and by older I mean like, what, well, that was two weeks ago, um, code, some of, uh, they're, they're, you used to use this this.controller for. So because... I actually have a shelf inside of my shelves controller. This is just the way I did it so that way you could see something. I want to add, in this case, I wanted to add a book to the shelves, and this makes no sense to me now that I'm looking at it because I probably should do that on my shelf. But, but at least I, I got to show you some, some weird things that you can do and how if you come across a, a situation, how you, would, how you could do it. So in this case, I'm telling, hey, shelves controller, you need to know about the shelf controller. So that way I'm saying, hey, I need to know about shelf. And it knows that I'm saying the shelf controller just because I said shelf and I'm using their naming schema. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm saying this.get controllers.shelf. Well, at this point, it's going to go get that shelf controller. I'm going to get the model for that shelf controller, which is the shelf model. And then I'm going to get the books, <coughs> the books model, or the books for that shelf, I'm going to call shelf.getBooks. I get the books off that shelf control, or the, the shelf model, and then I'm going to say books.createRecord, and I'm going to pass it a book. This isn't actually being used in the code. I'm going to have to actually use some, oops, use some uh, console magic to do this. So I'm going to open up a console and make it to where you can see. My, my goal here was to show you that I've, I haven't done any 
out of all the code that I've had there, I have, I don't really have a lot of magic. I have follow the idiom that Ember wants you to follow and if things are just working. So hopefully it's still, it is still in my, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the bowels of Ember where you don't really want to go unless you're debugging and I'm going to cheat. So I'm going to go find the shelf controller, the instance of the shelf shelves controller that's on the screen. So I'm going to, I'm going to create a variable called C for it. So at first it says it's undefined because it's really returning a promise. So now I have my instance of that shelves controller. So now what I want to do is I actually want to go call add book. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to add the book and I'm going to give it the right. <clears throat> Hopefully it's going to have the right image. If it doesn't, not a huge deal. In action, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to add this book. It gives me some amorphous error that started popping up right before I started the demo. So I haven't looked into what it is, but the, the goal, the key is, is that, Hey, this no JS action, the inaction book showed up. I didn't, so, you know, I don't have any magic anywhere saying, hey, when this does this, be sure to go update this template or bind this or whatever. And that's where Sprout Core comes in. Because they built this on top of Sprout Core, Sprout Core has this run loop. And that gives them the ability to do all this stuff in the background to go do all this stuff for you, which is actually really cool. So I've written hardly any code and I've automatically bound to templates and updated templates in a live manner. So we could just assume that I had some polling thing, you know, a web socket, whatever you want to have on the back end. And it said, oh, hey, you have this new book in your model. S sent it to the front end. It just be on the, it, it sent it to the, to the, to Ember and it just be in the template without any magic or, you know, without any hookup on your end. It's all magic, right? And it's there. I can see it. Everything's there. So they basically have a loop running all the time to just check for <coughs> changes in data. Changes in data. Notifies the controller. Yep. Or the router re-executes your controller. How the run loop actually works, I'm not no, completely okay. sure, but it's magic. That is awesome. It's, uh, th that, yeah. that is really, you know, really cool. The thing that it's like, I mean, some of this stuff is old hat, right? It's like, oh, I've seen this before, but I haven't seen it in, in, in that little of code. I mean, I've written trivial code. I mean, somebody could look at this and go, what the hell were you doing for two months? It's like, right? It's like, <laughs> what were you doing? But it's like, why, why do I want I don't need to do anymore. Look at that. It's pretty awesome, you know. Um, so those are my demos. Let's, let, me, let me finish up the, the presentation here. <clears throat> So some helpful links, <clears throat> and like I said, I'll, I'll, we'll get this on the, the, a link to this presentation and all that stuff on the Nebraska.js, but there's this page out there called Emberwatch. Um, it kind of has like, here's articles that are being written by Ember, here's videos, here's books, screencasts, that type of stuff. I'm gonna actually, why don't I just click on it and show you instead of, but I mean, that's one, one place that you can go look at some stuff, tutorials, that type of stuff. Um, Ember Tips is something you can follow on Twitter. They're pretty good about putting out some stuff. This Darth, I bring up this Darth Deuce blog. And I hope I'm saying that right. Um, only because he had like, you know, when I was using Controller 4, I would, uh, um, it would, Ember was going, hey, that's, uh, um, you know, don't use Controller 4 anymore. You need to use Needs. I was like, okay, well, what the hell is Needs? And that was the first thing that came up. And I noticed they had a lot, like quite a few things on there that were pretty helpful. And then this debugging Ember one, this one's pretty, this one's actually pretty awesome because it gives you, and I didn't go into any of the debugging stuff except for that, that stuff I did at the end with the console, but it gave me, you know, this tells you where all the magical stuff is. And it's like, you can do things in the template, like log controller, that stuff. It's because sometimes, you know, th things won't happen the way you, they're supposed to happen. Right. And you need to be, be able to get in there and figure out what's going on. And this shows you hooks on how to log or how to um, set debug points and that type of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So that one was pretty awesome. Um, uh, I just want to list some of the current books and uh, videos that are out there. So this Ember.js in action by Manning just came out. Um, 
I went and bought most of these just so I could, uh, you know, see what they were like and try and glean some data from them. But a lot of them are so new that it was like, okay, I didn't really get anything out of that, but at least, you know, I'm sure it will. They're, they're, like I said, I think a lot, the fact that they're about to release 1.0 is now where everybody's like, okay, now I'm gonna write my book because I don't wanna be writing a book that the API is gonna change, on, change, uh, change every couple of weeks. Um, this Master Space and Time is like part of a JavaScript book series. Um, he did, this guy, uh, Noel Rapp, and he did some like very like introduction to JavaScript and then it builds up and he did one on Backbone and then he's doing one on Ember. This one seems very Rails oriented. So if you work with Rails, it'll make a lot of sense to you. For me, it was like, there was a lot of stuff in there that was, it's just, I don't do Rails, so it was like, but if it, I think that one would be a good one. This instant Ember.js application development how-to, I just saw that before we started. I went and looked at it. It's like, if you have Safari books online, you can get that one, you can read it. It's tiny. There's like one, I don't know if that one's a work in progress or if it's just like a, here's how you do it. It was like, almost like my presentation, but probably better well done. Um, this fire up ember.js peep code screencast, everybody's going nuts about it. It's good. I mean, it, it does, if you go it, if you watch it, I don't want you to hear it and go, I know where you got your idea for your app. I, they didn't do books, but they did do like the same inception thing of thing, and they do a really good job there. Um, and they do a good job of keeping up. There's another one I didn't put on here. Um, if you watch Railscasts, but it's a Railscast Pro, so if you have a paid account, he just did one as well. And I think that's my last slide. So that's all I have. 